Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be showing you how to, you can use the approach hole in order to make an autopilot automatically fly an approach for you down to a landing. So the first thing we need to know is an approach hold is not automatic landing. If you attempt to use your approach hold as that fashion, we'll hit the ground pretty darn hard. The second thing you need to understand is if you're doing a GPS, if uh, a landing such as an RNAV, you need to make sure everything has been configured in your G1000 before you do it. But the most common type of approach hold landing is one that's going to feature an ILS. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to go ahead and pause us, and we're going to go ahead and get some details about the ILS that we're about to fly today so that you can see where the numbers are going to be coming from and be able to be able to safely land it itself. So we're going to be taking the ILS runway 33 landing into Bradley here, and we're basically going to be coming from the southeast. We're going to line ourselves up with the runway here, and we're going to settle down on runway 33, where the wind has been pretty good the last few days. So a couple different things you're going to need to know if you're going to be using the approach hold inside of your autopilot on a small general aviation plane. First, you're going to need to know what your initial altitude is going to be. In that case, it's going to be 1,800 feet. If we're substantially above that, that's going to affect when we can hit this point called the Homey intersection. Second thing you're going to need to know is going to be the frequency of the ILS. In this case, it is 108.55. Keep in mind, if you're using a G1000, a lot of times it will automatically capture this frequency. Finally, we're going to need to know the approach course so that we know what we're going to have to dial in as far as a heading to safely make our approach. Let's get set up. So we're going to come down here and get everything squared away. As you can see here, we're kind of frozen in the sky. We're pointing directly towards our heading. I can take a look at the little map real quick and zoom out just a little bit, and you can see everything's pretty much ready for us to go. Now, our altitude is a little bit low, but that's okay because we can dial it in and basically capture it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in our navigation frequency so that we have it all ready to go. Coming up here on the left side of the G1000 display, you'll notice I'm on Nav 2. I don't want to be on Nav 2. So I'm going to right click on this knob here and simply dial in our frequency from before. This is going to be 108.55, 108.55. To make this our active frequency, I'm simply going to press the swap button there. You'll notice it's going to give us an identifier, India, India, Kilo, X-Ray. And that's giving us a little heads up that it identifies it. We're now going to tell the G1000 or any general aviation system that we're going to be using the localizer and the glide slope read from a radio station instead of the GPS. To do this, we're going to be finding the CDI or the nav slash GPS button. I'm going to go ahead and click that. You'll notice that it highlights localizer one, meaning that it's a text localizer. The other thing you're going to observe is over here on the right, something that says G, which represents glide slope, now says that we're actually in position. If I were to pause on pause real quickly, you'll observe the fact that we are actually a little bit to the right of the localizer. You'll also notice the fact that our glide slope, we're below the glide slope, which makes sense because as you remember, we're at 1400 feet when we should be at 1800 feet. Now, there's a lot of cool little tricks we can use here to make this process a little bit simpler for us. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select a heading that puts us within 30 degrees of the localizer. So if you remember here that this thing is pointing towards that 328, which you'll notice it automatically aligned for us, it won't always do that depending on the aircraft you're flying. So all I'm going to do is take my heading control and I'm going to tip it so that it's pretty close. So 328 uh, minus 30 would be 329 uh, or 8, which would put us right on course. Now all I can do is press heading hold. If you look at the top here, you'll notice the heading is now armed. Our altitude is captured, but there's nothing to do with the actual approach for our landing. So let's go and unpause and let our aircraft start sliding towards our approach here. We're actually going to have to start slowing down quite a bit here. We're getting darn close to the ground. Now that that's all set, we can now arm the approach whenever we're ready. Now, there's actually several different ways to arm this approach. Uh, one thing we could do is we could actually do it via the localizer only with no glide slope by pressing the nav button. Notice it highlights lock here. Or we could arm the localizer, which is left and right, and the glide slope, which is up and down, together by pressing the APR button. Do you notice that glide slope is now highlighted and localizer is now highlighted and they're both in white, meaning they have not been captured yet. I'm actually going to reduce power a little bit. You're going to notice the glide slope is going to start creeping down in just a few moments. You can see the localizer is highlighted, notifying me that it captured the localizer. Now, the incredible thing here is you'll notice my glide slope has not yet been captured. If it doesn't show that it's captured, it means it's not tracking, and you'd have to fly this as a non-precision approach, which is perfectly fine. It's a relatively uh, straightforward experience when you have an aircraft with a system that makes it that easy. So what we're watching for now, and again, remember, we're very, very low. While we would have been at 1,800 feet, but the way that I set up the scenario kind of put us up that 3-4. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. 
one, two, three. And you can see the glide slope is now sliding down, indicating that we're coming up on our position. We also know that we're getting closer to our destination on account of the fact that our DME, that's our distance measuring equipment, can actually read how far we need to be to get there. Now, if I were to come down here and actually come do my PFD options, if I flipped on DME, you can actually get an exact reading of how many miles away your particular landing is. Now, if I were to scroll down here, you'll notice that we've already crossed Homey, and we're actually approaching uh, this basically outer marker here, which we're going to be at in just a few moments. Swinging back over to here, you'll notice the glide slope is now flashing green, and the localizer is already green, meaning this aircraft is now completely on automatic approach. Uh, keep in mind, once you're on automatic approach, any adjustments to altitude or anything along those lines will not register on account of the fact that uh, basically it's just going to ignore it. And uh, that's something to know. However, there is one more thing you should be doing, and you should be taking the time to find out what your missed approach procedure is going to be and put in that altitude immediately. So according to this, we're going to climb to 4,000 feet and then turn direct to Bath Vortac. Got it. So we need to know some numbers here. So let's go ahead and get that. Barnes is at 113.0, and we need 4,000 feet. Let's dial those things in now during our approach. All right, let's grab it. So we're going to grab our altitude to 4,000 feet. Notice it did not impact our glide slope hold at all. The aircraft is still completely flying, effortlessly going down. But we do need to get ready on that 113. Let me go ahead and come up here. We'll dial that 113.00. So now it is ready for that missed approach in the event that we do make a mistake with our actual landing itself. Now, one really cool trick you can actually use here that I want to say you want to be a little cautious with, again, depending on the system that you're using, is just to be mindful of if you do have two nav radios, some people like to set the second nav radio to the frequency they're going to need, and then they actually activate the bearing here. So you can actually see that second bearing is actually pointing in the direction we're going to have to travel in the event that we have to do a missed approach. Again, the automatic pilot is doing all the work here. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here, and we'll continue our nice little relaxing journey down to the ground. Ah, looks pretty good to me. I think this is a perfectly good opportunity. Coming in, coming in. Go ahead and cancel that. Go ahead and bring that down. Oh, we have a low streaming quality today. That's okay. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Oh, there's an airplane on the runway. Oh, no. So what we're going to do is we're going to immediately execute a missed approach. Now, certain different types of autopilots, again, depending on which one you're simulating here, will have a missed approach slash go around button. You'll notice our G1000 actually captured everything correctly. Do you see here that it shows that we were captured a pitch? So if I actually re-engage the automatic pilot, you'll actually observe here that even though the approach was okay, it actually assumed that we wanted to go around. Now, this is easy for us because all we have to do now is go ahead and tell it to go direct to Barnes. Now, there's so many ways to do this now. One thing we could do, for example, is we could right click on our heading. We could point towards where that needle is. Oh, we could come over here and press the heading hole button like that. The other thing we could do is we could actually change the navigation source. If I were to go, for example, to bearing two, actually not bearing two, my apologies. If we were to go to CDI, is it to VOR2? If I right click on my course selection knob, do you see how it centers that up automatically? Now all I have to do is press nav. And now what that will do is that'll actually capture it once we get a little bit higher and actually get the signal. You'll notice this needle is kind of hollow right now. We're not actually capturing up. There we go. We just grabbed onto it. Excellent. So you can see this aircraft is now going to be climbing up to 4,000 feet automatically. It's proceeding directly to its missed point automatically, and everything was handled by the automatic pilot. Enjoy.